Here we go, guys. First hand we're gonna go over here, we have pocket threes in the cutoff position. We make it $60, the button calls 60, and now the action is on the small blind. He goes into the tank, and you know what that means, a three bet is coming. He decides to raise it up. He makes it $240. I started the hand with a little over $5,000 and my opponent covers me. So I think I am deep enough here to make the call. Trying to set mine. Obviously, if the button comes along too, that would be okay. I'm trying to hit a set and win a big pot. I decide to make the call for $240 and the button folds. We are going heads up to the flop in our first pot, playing 1020 at the Bellagio for the World Series of Poker. We see a board of Queen five seven two hearts we do not hit our set and surprisingly the small blind checks and given the fact that i do have showdown value on this board i decide to check back the dealer puts out the fourth card which is the deuce of diamonds and the small blind checks to me again and given the fact that i'm most likely going to have the best hand here i decide to bet small i make it 200 dollars trying to get him to fold ace high hands with some equity which he does end up folding so we end up taking down our first pot here just last week i posted a video of me playing 10 20 with a 40 dollars straddle which was the biggest game i've ever played I ended up winning around two thousand dollars that session today we're playing 10 20 without a straddle so the game is not as big but it's still a big game buying in for five thousand dollars i gotta be ready gotta be buckled up gotta be ready for some big pots next up i am in later position raise it up to sixty dollars with a beautiful premium hand ace king of spades end up getting three callers we go to the flop four ways which comes off ace five five two clubs Flopping top pair, top kicker, great board for us. When it checks to me, I put out a bet. I make a C bet of $120 and only the small blind makes the call. We are now heads up to the turn, which is the queen of hearts. Shouldn't change anything at all here. Unless he has a hand like ace queen, I expect my opponent to have a weaker ace than me or possibly a flush draw. So when he checks to me, I am going to continue to bet here. I make it 320 bucks. My opponent in the small blind doesn't think for too long and makes the call. I would expect my opponent to put in a raise with a hand like five or possibly ace queen for top two pair so i'm feeling pretty good about my hand going to the last card which is the nine of hearts the flush draw misses my opponent checks and i want to be putting out a bet here that he can call the hand like ace jack ace 10 ace 8 maybe ace 4 ace 3 i bet 500 dollars. he does not think for too long and fold so it looks like he must have had a flush draw we take down another pot here flopping top pair top kicker and holding up For a high stakes game in Vegas, this table is action. Some monster pots here. I end up watching this hand go down where they're all in on the turn. One guy has a set. The other guy has a straight. They end up running it twice and the set gets there twice. He hits a full house on the first board and hits quads on the second board. Now it is our turn to hit a big hand. About 10 minutes after this big pot, we end up picking up a big hand of our own, pocket kings on the button. I end up raising it up to $60, and only the big blind makes the call. We see a board of king, 10, 7, 2 clubs, flopping top set, in position, doesn't get too much better than that. The big blind checks it over to me. I put out a bet, I make it $80, and the big blind does something I was not expecting him to do. He decides to fold, unfortunate there, no more action with our top set of kings. We then get moved over to the main game. Over on the main game table now, there's one fun action player that opens up to $80 under the gun. I have 7 8 of clubs in later position. I end up making the call. Heads up to a flop of 4, 5, 6, 2 diamonds. We flop the nut straight. My opponent in the under the gun position decides to check. Not what I was looking to see. I was hoping he would bet there. I put out a $100 bet and the action is back on him. He opens under the gun to an $80 sizing. I expect him to have some over pairs on this board, possibly some flush draws. Maybe he's deciding to put in a check raise. That would just be amazing. We both have about $6,000 in our stack. He thinks for a while, looks over at me, looks back at his cards, and decides to fold. Alright guys, I usually don't do this talk to the camera thing halfway through the session, but we started off today at 10.20, the game looked really good, tons of recreational players and a ton of action, but then we got moved to the main game and that game was not good. Tons of pros, tons of young, really, really good players, guys from different countries, they were tanking forever, every single hand took like 
three or four minutes. It was awful. I was definitely one of the worst players at the table. So put my name on the 510 list, waited to get called. Now I'm on a 510 table, should be better action. And I think it's a lesson towards me and everybody else trying to take shots at bigger games. If the game is bad, don't just sit in a bad game or you're one of the worst players at the table. Drop down at stakes, play a game you're more comfortable with and hopefully win more money. I think I won about $300 to 1020 in about two hours. But now we're at 510, hopefully to run good, find a good table, get some good action. Let's go. We end up taking our seat at one of the seven 510 tables they have here at Bellagio during the series. There is a lot of action going on tonight. We get right into the first hand in the big blind with pocket tens, folds all the way to the button who makes it 30. I'm going to be three betting button versus big blind with such a strong hand. I make it $120 and now the action's back on him. The button decides $120 is not good for him. He is going to make it more. He makes it $400 and this race size is very polarized. He's saying he has aces and kings with this sizing. He makes it over 3x 4-bet. It just kind of feels like he was trying to push me off the hand. So I immediately put him on ace-king. And pocket tens does beat ace-king. We are flipping. He could potentially have some bluffs here. Maybe some ace-high hands. Maybe some king-queen or king-jack that he's turning into a 4-bet bluff. Most of the time, I would just fold my pocket tens here. But this time, I just had a feeling he was not that strong or had ace-king. And I just came from a big game over $5,000 deep. So I'm just going to go with it here. I decide to go all in. All in. What do you want to do, once or twice? All right. My opponent calls, we decide to run the board out one time. The flop is king, queen, six, not the best board here. The turn is a jack and the river is a nine. We end up making a straight. I show my pocket tens and my opponent mucks. He later told me he had ace king. So we were flipping. We got a little lucky there with that run out, hitting a straight on the river. I switch tables a couple times before I finally find a good action table. They're straddling under the gun. I have ace, queen of hearts, and the small blind decide to raise this one up. I make it $70. The big blind decides that $70 is not enough for him. He makes it $170. The straddler folds, and I decide to make the call. I started this hand with $2,500 in my stack, and my opponent in the big blind has about $2,000. Heads up to the flop of ace, five, deuce. We end up flopping top pair, queen, kicker. I check. He puts out a quick bet of $120, and on this board, I'm going to be way ahead or way behind. If he has queens, kings, or jacks, he's going to be brawling basically dead. But if he has ace, king, I'm only going to be drawing two, three out. So I decide to just make the call. The turn card is the king. Interesting card here. If he has pocket kings, he did just make a set. I check, and he checks back. The final card is a six, and I go back and forth whether I want to check or bet. If I bet here, it's kind of hard to get called by a worse hand. I think no matter what I bet, pocket jacks and pocket queens are just going to fold. If I check, he could possibly turn those hands into a bluff or possibly bluff with another hand he might have. So I check. He does put out a bet. He makes it $230, and for that price, definitely not going to be folding here. I decide to make the call, and he shows me the bad news. I knew it. When you call, I know the age. Yeah. Only King Kong, look at you. Fantastic. Look at you. Why are you doing King? Just a couple hands later, we are still straddling now. There's an open to 60 from middle position. I have pocket queens in the cutoff. I decide to three bet. I make it $180, and the middle position player matches my bet. King, 10, 10, two clubs. Middle position player checks it over to me. And on this board in a three bet pot, I decide to check this one back. The turn card is the jack of spades. He checks it to me again. And now I decide to go for some thin value just so that I can check back the river trying to get called by a jack X hand. Maybe some ace high flush draws. So I decide to bet kind of small. I make it $130. The action is now on the middle position player. He thinks over his options and decides to eventually make the call. So I'm probably going to check back most rivers that don't contain a nine, an ace, or a queen. We see the last card, which is a four of clubs, bringing in that front door flush. My opponent leads out for $240 right away, and I make the snap fold. Show one time. Show, show, show. One time. Okay. That's ace it? Queen. I know you. This time you had ace queen. 100%. Okay. I, said, ace queen no I know good. you. I know when you said that, I know you had <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate two hands there, losing most of our profit. Next up here, there's a raise to 40. I have seven eight of diamonds on the button, decide to three bet. I make it $130. The big blind cold calls $130, and the initial raiser decides to fold. 
The player in the big blind is the guy who turned a set of kings on us to beat our ace queen. So let's get some of that money back. Queen, five, seven. We end up flopping second pair here. The big blind decides to lead out on this board. He makes it $130. And with second pair, backdoor flush and straight draws, I'm not going to fold. I decide to make the call. The dealer collects our chips and eventually puts out an action turn card. All in. What do you want to do? One, two, run toys? Sure. I got that one. Shit. What do you have? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Straight. We chop, I guess. The turn card is the eight of clubs, giving us two pair. My opponent bets $600. I shove all in for around $1,800, and he makes a snap call with a straight and flush draw. We run it twice. He hits the straight on the first board and misses the second board, so we end up chopping this pot up. Yeah, you did you say one time, I would have gone. Yeah. Hey, hey, I, King Jack. I always go twice. <laughs> now we go. We go twice. Yeah, yeah. A couple crazy back-to-back -back hands there. Next up, we have pocket jacks in the straddle. A very, very tight woman decides to raise it up. She was limping almost all of her range. She makes it $70 on the button, so I think she has a pretty strong hand here. I decide to just make the call with pocket jacks. We are heads up now, out of position to the flop of five, five, six, two clubs. We end up flopping an over pair. I check it over to her, and she does put out a continuation bet. She makes it $80, and I'm not feeling too great about this spot. Like I said, she'd been playing very tight. However... Can't be folding pocket jacks on this board, so I make the call for $80. The turn card is maybe one of the worst cards in the deck. It's the king of spades. Now I decide to check it over to her, and she continues to bet, but she bets for a smaller sizing. She makes it $120, and on this turn card, I would expect her to check back all of her tens, jacks, queens, and pocket nines. So whenever she bets here, she's polarized to saying she has aces, ace king, and pocket kings. I'm not really sure if I have the best hand or not, but when my opponent represents such a narrow range, I feel like I'm just going to have to call here and evaluate on the river. If a club does come in, I could lead out huge on the river trying to represent a flush. We end up going heads up to the last card here, which is the four of clubs. So that is kind of the card I was looking for. It's a potential bluff candidate. I go into the tank whether I want to do it or not and decide to pull the trigger. I lead out here for $700. My reasoning behind leading out here on the river is that I can get hands that are beating me to fold like a king, possibly pocket aces, maybe king queen. If she has pocket queens or pocket jacks, she will most likely fold those hands too. I don't think she has a flush here ever. If she bet the flop with a flush draw, I think she would just check back the turn trying to realize her equity. I can have all the flushes in my range. I called in the straddle. I can have a ton of suited hands here. I could be check calling on the flop and check calling on the turn with a flush draw. And then if I hit it on the river... I would lead out big trying to get paid off by aces, ace-king, or king-queen. I also picked this player because she had been playing very conservative, not playing many hands, limping a ton of hands, so I don't think she's going to want to be paying off a $700 river bet with just one pair. She only has about $1,200 in her stack, so if she calls, she's going to be left with less than $500. She thinks for a while, my heart is racing. I'm really hoping this bluff gets through. She ends up tanking for about two minutes and lets it go. We end up taking down this pot with pocket jacks here. Pretty sure it was a bluff, but either way, we end up winning this one. It's around 2 a.m. We've been playing for about five hours, and what I've noticed in the past, at the Bellagio, after 2 a.m., the tables start to heat up. The action is about to pop off at our table. We have two players that sit down, buying for $1,000. They're straddling, raising blind, buying fireball shots. Things are about to get a little crazy. One of the action players I was just talking about straddles under the gun for 20. The other action player is on the button. He ends up calling 20. I have king-queen offsuit in the small blind. I raise it up. I make it $110. The under the gun straddler makes the call, and the button makes the fold. We end up seeing a board of king, eight, deuce, two hearts. We flop top pair, queen kicker. Great board for us. I put out a smaller bet here. I make it $60. Trying to keep my opponent in there with his entire range. He ends up snap calling our $60 bet, so we're going heads up to the turn, which is the six of hearts does bring in the flush. I decide now to check it over to him, potentially let him bluff or possibly value bet at worse hand. He makes it $200. I am not going to be folding against this player. I make the call. The last card we see here is another eight. I decide to play and flow and check it over to him and he instantly checks back. I tell him I have a king. He shows 10 deuce for a deuce and a king is going to beat that. So we end up taking down our last pot. No more significant hands for us. We end up racking up our chips, heading to the cage and cashing out for the night.
All right, guys, that is it for this session tonight. Playing at the Bellagio, 510 and 1020. We don't know how much we were in the game for because I was at 1020, then I switched to 510. I was switching tables. I don't know how much, how much I was in for, but I counted my chips before, counted my chips after, and I won 85 bucks. So I will take it. A nice little profit here after a crazy swingy ass session. And to be honest, it's kind of tilting because I've only lost two sessions while I've been here in Vegas. I've been here for eight days. I've only lost two sessions. One of the sessions was the Aria vlog I showed you guys like about a week or so ago. And then another session was there at the Aria that I did not film. But some sessions I didn't film were a 3.5K Bellagio win. Yesterday I won $2,300 at the win playing 2-5. The day before that I won $1,800 at the win playing 5-10. And unfortunately I didn't film any of those sessions because I can't film every single day. It's just way too much work. I would be editing forever. I can't film or post seven vlogs a week. That would just be too crazy. So it's just kind of luck of the draw. I play poker every single day. I might play two sessions a day and I film eight hours. So basically I'm filming like 16 hours a week. That's it. So if I play 40 hours, those hours are kind of unaccounted for. And it's just a little unfortunate that while I'm on this trip, I'm not filming those big winning sessions of three and a half K or two and a half K. Uh, and then today we just won 85 bucks, but it was still a pretty exciting session. So far on this trip, I have just been on a massive upswing. I have been here for eight days now and I'm up $12,500. Still have another six days left. So the goal is to get to $15,000 profit in two weeks while we're here at the World Series of Poker. I think we can do it. We got six more sessions left. Put some run good down in the comments. If you guys like this video, hit that like and subscribe button. Comment down below, share the video, and uh, you know, all that stuff. I appreciate all the comments. These Vegas vlogs have been blowing up. 40,000 views in just one day, which is pretty wild. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and until next time, I'll see ya.